So a very quick introduction to myself first. I'm Kevin Greenway. Uh, I'm the CTO for Tenzig and uh, I've worked with Tenzig now for I think it's going on for nine years and um, yeah I've seen a lot of change during that time uh, from our from our perspective with regards to the way endpoints are used with VDI and, and end user computing and you know probably the biggest change for sure like like has been resonated here today was last year and uh, part of that is to I guess I want to uh, do a recap on what we personally experienced at Tenzig during 2020 and specifically in terms of the growth of Windows Virtual Desktop and how Tenzig have assisted Nerdio and mutual partners with providing the perfect endpoint platform for that. And uh, during this session, I'll be giving a live demonstration featuring our remote management and tools available for deploying Tenzig endpoints specifically with Windows Virtual Desktop. So just some quick housekeeping before I start. I think the consensus of the day is for attendees to be uh, kind of muted throughout, but feel free to ask any questions in the chat panel uh, throughout and I'll try and cover those at the end as well as giving everybody an opportunity to unmute at the end. And I think another common question that I've seen come in on the other sessions is the recordings. I believe the record this is session is being recorded and uh, will be available later in the week and uh, for Nerdio I will share the uh, the presentation as well so that you can share that uh, for attendees if uh, if requested. So yeah, thanks again for joining and uh, and I hope you uh, you enjoy the session. So a quick background first for Tenzig for those who are not aware. We're solely focused uh, as 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 Kevin said at the hardware layer. We're a thin and zero client vendor and uh, the fact that we're solely focused gives us the ability of specializing in what we do, which is essentially remoting graphics and audio and, and USB peripherals. And uh, historically, that's been from on-premise setups such as RDS deployments, Citrix, VMware, uh, the, the, the kind of usual crowd in that space. And then more recently, and again, very aggressively last year, more towards cloud-based deployments um, and again a big part of that is thanks to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. We're headquartered as a company in the US specifically in Phoenix Arizona and uh, we have an EMEA office which as you can probably tell by my accent is where I'm based from in not so sunny and very dark and cold uh, Leicestershire and how I would love to be uh, in Phoenix Arizona right now and hopefully that will uh, that will happen again at some point this this year probably probably not for a few months I guess we're a long-standing partner with Microsoft having offered mutual customers both Linux and Windows based endpoints for RDS based deployments and again more recently for Windows Virtual Desktop the Tenzig and Nerdio partnership I think is worthy of mention as um, I believe our philosophy is 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 very similar and complementary. Where Nerdio's aim is to completely simplify the deployment, pricing, packaging, and management tools. As I've seen, uh, Tenzig's approach is that we make our endpoints fit um, a partner and a customer's environment, and not the other way around. And, and Tenzig is really built from the ground up around providing excellent customer service. And this is really why our customers come back again and again for re repeat purchases. And uh, as you'll see from testimonials that are in and around the website. Uh, where we were able to differ from com competitors, I touched on this before, is the fact that we're solely focused and uh, and our staff are highly trained. So they aren't just specialized in the, in the in the physical tin and the endpoint, you know, they're very specialized in terms of the 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 remoting of again the graphics and the audio and the and the right way to provide secure connectivity uh, for users, and that's through uh, sort of formal training and certification um, throughout uh, sort of like the sales and and the tech support teams. So, just want to cover a quick recap, um, really from not just necessarily COVID-19, but from a summary of what we saw at Tenzig um, around EUC. And the first thing really is just, you know, the big, huge change that happened overnight um, for employees. It happened for, for IT, you know, back in March 2020, where employees globally were sent packing home. 
and uh, just talk to colleagues and partners even now just in you know sheer surprise that almost a year later you know companies we, we're still here we're still here right now and uh, companies are, are for sure either at it for the long haul or at least for the short to medium term future uh, and not only that but they need to be prepared to provide employees and the business with with either option of in office and remote working without compromising on experience and productivity so the future still remains a little unclear but for sure cloud seems to be the way forwards and it's a great platform for offering the best of both worlds uh, to employees again whether whether it becomes kind of like a mixed uh, hybrid model of office and remote working to allow employees and businesses the you know the benefits of, of both types of uh, work environments and if we look at some figures to back that up firstly uh, global public revenue uh, public cloud revenue sorry was expected to grow by 6.3 percent in 2020 uh, quoted at 258 billion dollars and that was up from 243 back in 2019 um, secondly public cloud infrastructure specifically is expected to grow 35 percent in 2021 and then as we focus specifically on DAS, this was expected to have the most significant growth in 2020. And so again, we're here today to see the impact of this and specifically around how Windows Virtual Desktop can and is already benefiting global organizations in shifting their end user computing strategy to the public cloud, as well as from a Tenzig perspective, how we can help Azure and Nerdio partners provide the perfect complementary endpoint platform so just to recap on the key benefits of, of windows virtual desktop before we move more into tenzig so it's it's all about deploying and scaling in in minutes and this is thanks partly to the wvd service which manages the infrastructure or replaces the infrastructure of previous components such as the rd gateway and and brokers and load balances as well as of course uh, the session and VDI hosts, which previously sat on, on physical infrastructure. And deployment is managed via a combination of the Azure portal and PowerShell and, and, and uh, Nerdio, as we've seen in the previous sessions. And this ultimately results in a huge reduction in, in time to deploy and scale versus equivalent or previous on-premise models. And another motivator, and a particularly big one that we saw with um, various different deployments last year, is the integration that it offers with Office 365 subscriptions, um, and specifically Microsoft Teams as a you know a, a, a huge collaboration tool that obviously we're using here um, uh, with NerdioCon. And thirdly, the cost savings and significant ones at that, with the fact that uh, Windows 10 is now offered as a multi-session experience, and uh, this increases scalability by supporting multiple users by VM or, or host. And previously that was only supported via RDSH based hosts, which were based on Windows Server Platform. Uh, and, and as well as again, the cost reductions in terms of infrastructure. So again, it's it's important to cover why Tenzig, you know, why are we relevant here? And we've covered um, that, you know, Windows Virtual Desktop is the platform of choice for DAS, but what about from an endpoint perspective? And this is something that we've been asked, you know, you know, throughout the years, you know, why Tenzig as, a, as an endpoint vendor? And again, it's much more than just looking at the TIN, as I kind of touched on before. And again, this is relevant very much for Nerdio partners and MSPs who want to be able to offer their customers a pain-free option as far as endpoints for easy and secure attachment to Windows Virtual Desktop. So, you know, there's two opening keywords here, free and uncomplicated. And, and that's a very prominent um, call out, which I'll cover in a few sections here. So firstly, we offer a hassle-free evaluation or trial program, and this is available for all partners. You know, take a pick from our extremely wide range of endpoints and test them against, you know, your most common type of users to your most critical or demanding <laughs> and ensure they are ideally suited for each use case at, at no risk. Second, which again, I'll repeat uh, multiple times through the session, is the enterprise free, uh, no hidden ties, enterprise cloud management. And thirdly, 
Uh, our rate range of XH6 based thin and zero clients are all equipped with a three year adv advanced exchange warranty, meaning we ship replacements ahead of you returning to base if you do so happen to get a, you know, a fault within within that three year warranty period. And fourth and fifth, uh, free product training tailored to your requirements, which is extended to access, again, our certified teams. And we offer also pre and post sales support. And I think that final point is the most prominent of all. And I ask you to hold on to that point. And again, that's the thing that resonates throughout, again, why partners and customers, you know, choose Tenzig and, and return in uh, subsequent years. So just to cover our range of endpoints, we offer both Linux and Windows 10 IoT based endpoints and uh, an extremely wide range of form factor options. Again, mostly powered by Intel and AMD processors and various hardware options to suit the, the the really wide array of monitor configurations that we see today. Even our entry level models support uh, dual monitor um, upwards, um, as well as re um, supporting legacy setups such as DVI and, and VGA based monitors and pretty much our entire range of units that we've uh, released in the last year or two have all supported 4K and our, our most recent product that we've just announced and released the 6100 series which is powered by an amd ryzen processor supports native quad display uh, 4k at 60 hertz and for different niches we support um, fiber poe and of and of course wireless so a really wide array of uh, of endpoints to suit all the various use cases and needs for windows virtual desktop Tenzig NOS is our leading Linux based platform, which is marketed as a zero client. And this, uh, I guess, originates probably from about nine or 10 years ago. If anybody has, is familiar with or has come across a product called Kavisa that was eventually bought by Citrix, it was a revolutionary at the time, kind of on-premise small business VDI uh, platform. And we, we built the product or wrapped it around that and have since extended it to you know, again, the usual the usual suspects to um, to be a kind of built built and designed from the ground up simple solution for delivering access to virtual desktops and applications. It's an OS that's derived from Ubuntu. At this present time, it's based on 1804.2, and it's fully secured and finely tuned for remote delivery of graphics, audio, and again USB peripheral attachments. And our approach to this is to make the user experience simple from setup to usage via our three simple step GUI. So Tenzig NOS is a, is a zero client style kiosk user interface, which is all about taking the complexity out of uh, creating various profiles and settings in order to hide the local operating system, to secure it for the users and to give them a kind of intuitive platform to get them in this case to uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. We empower users access to local tailored settings uh, such as, you know, for example, keyboard or mouse or display settings. And importantly, this includes the, res the simple restriction of local application install or other administrative settings, uh, as well as having zero access to local files. So it takes away uh, that topic of zero trust. You know, this is a trusted device and it can be finally managed in such a way as well so it can be updated and managed using the the Tenzig manager. Then Tenzig uh, Windows 10 IoT or Windows 10 IoT I should say that Tenzig of many years experience in the world of Windows IoT or as it was known before Windows embedded. Now whilst Linux based thin clients are ever relevant and in hot demand uh, we find that there are still many relevant use cases best suited for Windows 10 IoT. And I think it's it's important to call out specifically the fast and ever changing unpredictable times that, the, that we're currently in, as well as the relatively young and fast evolving products such as Windows Virtual Desktop. So as of today, the Windows Virtual Desktop offers the greatest feature set via the Windows based client. Uh, so a great benefit of, of Windows Virtual Desktop is that it can support any device, but to get the, the greatest feature set out of it as it stands today is really delivered through the Windows based client. And I'll, I'll call out a few of these features that again we see in hot demand. So 
includes features such as remote apps and importantly to have them seamlessly displayed to the user alongside their locally installed apps. Uh, again, collaboration uh, support is extremely hot topic with the fact that employees are working from home. So they want to be able to work effectively and efficiently with platforms such as Microsoft Teams and Zoom, which offer a V redirection. And that's the technique where the audio and video is actually encoded directly at the endpoint. So that's ever important when you want to reduce your compute and network consumption at the cloud layer and uh, redirect it to the endpoint. So the endpoints are actually making direct contact with either uh, Azure in the case of uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom cloud services in the case of, uh, of Zoom VDI. And then importantly as well for port redirection. So it offers the greatest flexibility and wide support of the various USB peripherals that users uh, are pulling out of drawers and all sorts of things, again, whilst working from home. So this is achieved either via USB redirection or other kind of more optimized redirection methods for peripherals such as printers and scanners. Um, so another key feature of the Windows-based client is the fact that we also see a demand for web apps. Now, whilst you can run web apps as, say, a published app uh, with WVD, it's sometimes a need to actually run those web apps locally through a local browser, such as Edge or, or, or Chrome or, or any other local browser. So again, Windows 10 IoT gives you the native support for Edge and any other a choice of browser as, as you wish. And again, that moves that load away from the data center as well as gives the users uh, locality so that again, if they're connecting to their desktop in the Azure data center and they're looking for directions somewhere locally, that it picks up their, their local location. And I guess third, and I'll be covering some parts on this in the demo, is that we offer features for simplifying the securing of Windows 10 IoT by supplying layering tools that uh, make calls to features such as UWF and Shell Launcher. And we also can support image management um, and importantly, remote management of Windows 10 IoT, which again, I'll be covering on this very next slide. So introducing the Tenzig Manager, which is our Windows-based centralized management tool, and as stated here on the slide, can be hosted anywhere, including both on-premise or in, in Azure. The Tenzig Manager is included with all Tenzig endpoints, and as I touched on in the earlier slide, it uh, remains free, regardless of the number of endpoints or features required. And this is really now quite unique in the marketplace. So again, there's no hidden costs or no hidden ties. It's uh, it's tied to each and every single um, Linux or Windows-based Tenzig endpoint. So remote management is uh, yeah, a very topical um, subject to discuss, uh, and that's covered within the Tenzig Manager. Now, we were very fortunate with the fact that we offered support for this probably around five years ago now in the stages where a lot of organizations were looking to uh, retire or replace uh, traditional site-to-site -site, uh, VPNs or MPLS type links. And um, what we did at that time is we offered a feature or, or extended support to be able to re do remote management through a feature and a component called the Cloud Connector, which is basically just an extra component, an extra layer of the Tenzig Manager server. And this provides businesses with a completely integrated strategy for remote management of employees and endpoints. So this provides IT teams the capability to remotely provision and configure endpoints, um, but also the ever important requirement, especially today with remote working, uh, IT teams to be able to shadow their employees for providing remote support. And that can be done both through the local console that's um, that's featured on the Tenzing Manager server, as well as through a browser-based uh, console, which again, the IT teams can access uh, remotely. And again, the, re the, the recurring theme here is at no additional cost. So it's, it's is still inclusive with all Tenzig endpoints. And again, as I touched on before, you can choose from on-premise or cloud-based. 
and it's there to ensure that your endpoints are fully secured and up to date with uh, with firmware updates which feature things like feature and security updates and for the windows 10 iot clients we can package for example later versions of the remote desktop client to send those out to towards those windows 10 iot clients and Again, the, the resounding feedback from the community that uses Tenzig Manager is just how simple it is to deploy and you know, maintain and, and support the endpoints in, in comparison to equivalent tools. And I've posted the link here on uh, YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and just search Tenzig or you, you're able to jot down that link, there's a ton of videos on there and I will, uh, if I remember, linked to some of the key ones at the end of the session and uh, last year we did we did three fairly deep dive sessions on the Tenzig manager one which was providing a general overview another one which was best practice around management of endpoints and then a third one which which I actually covered which was all around remote management so it was best practice uh, in terms of deploying the components in terms of securing it um, which included features like importing um, say an AD signed certificate and again just best practice and recommendations so yeah do uh, if you if you are interested in this side of things do have a look at those videos and there is another one which kind of covers a summary of what I'll demonstrate around setting up the Windows 10 IoT platform for Windows Virtual Desktop. So let's look at how this plays out in a couple of uh, common remote management scenarios. So the Tenzig Manager server, as we can see here, is component based and components can either be installed all to the same virtual machine or separate dependent on load and infrastructure. And a typical use case is seen here that all components of the manager are installed to a single VM, in this case within, within Azure. And uh, in this environment, the endpoints which are, are now located at home pointed towards the cloud connector as we'll see in the demonstration either manually or via a dns srv record assuming you're using um, managed dns space and that enables the endpoints to create a secure uh, tunnel between themselves and the management server and then uh, the it teams can again access either the web console or the console from any location to again either shadow the endpoints as well as sending things like firmware updates and packages towards the endpoints for complete management. And similarly as seen here, components of the Tenzig Manager again can be installed on premise and components including the manager server and consoles are typically in installed inside the inside network and then for enablement of remote management, the cloud connector is installed to a separate uh, VM in the, the DMZ space. And again, this provides the same remote management capability for an on-premise environment and probably not necessarily for net new or Windows virtual desktop deployments, but this was certainly the most common approach that we assisted existing customers with last year when again, all of a sudden uh, employees were packing up uh, tens again points and uh, taking them towards their home locations. So again, with this easy feature, we were able to assist organizations easily uh, last year in this big, big shakeup and change. So in the final slide before we cover the demo, I just want to cover some best practice tips on using Tenzig Windows 10 IoT with Windows Virtual Desktop. Again, just because of the fact that this is where we're seeing the largest growth and demand currently uh, based, on the, based on the topics that I mentioned before. So firstly, um, and you know, very importantly, it's really import important to fine tune your image for the purpose ahead. So our factory stock image that ships on the Tenzig endpoints, we call it our VDI image. It is updated and it's tuned regularly. Uh, and it is designed out of box to support those common breadth of VDI and e EUC solutions like Citrix and VMware, et cetera. Um, so if you, are if you are looking to deploy this, for sure, you want to go in there and remove any of those unnecessary um, services or applications. So, you know, Windows 10 IoT, whilst it looks and feels very much like Windows 10 IoT Enterprise, it's based on a, on a much smaller, leaner image 
and the components for example the storage inside a thin client is also much smaller so fine-tune it to the best of your ability with the fact that 10 iot is designed much more for a a kind of singular process in this case to allow your users to connect to windows virtual desktop at the same time provision additional applications and drivers and services as needed and um, and that includes obviously things like wallpapers etc and then you can use the uh, the image cloning feature of the tensig manager which is based on sysprep and uh, you can use the tensig manager again additionally to then deploy that image out to endpoints now an additional service that we do offer uh, partners um, on request and discussion with with uh, somebody at tensig sales is pre-imaging the, the client. So let's say that you work with our pre-sales team around this, ho this whole process, um, or as I would say, process. Um, that, uh, that can be worked with, say for example, somebody in our support team who can assist you with that, uh, that process of capturing that image, fine tuning it again to your requirements, and then either you know, deploying that uh, at Tenzig's uh, assembly production facility or yourselves doing it um, in in line with your uh, end users it's also really important to consider automating the user's connection at startup and again the, the demo will cover both of these scenarios so firstly consider something called the shell launcher which provides users with a kiosk based look and feel for access to the windows desktop client which is their platform to WVD um, and alternatively um, you can use if you're using a mixed environment let's say for example and the user requires access to both WVD as well as local apps again something like Edge you can leverage auto log on as, as a pre-configured client called thin client user which effectively has restricted access but this gives the user the ability of the simultaneous access to both the desktop client and again a local browser just just as a as a typical example here and last but not least again making sure that you secure the client so windows 10 iot features some really great um, uh, tools that uh, we've essentially built some um, some GUI uh, tools and, and layers for and one of these things is the unified write filter and this can be used to restrict write access to the volume or the drive and that can it can be configured as such to exclude let's say specific areas of the file system and registry so think of it a bit like a non-persistent VM where when the, wherever the user makes changes so again if you've given them access to the desktop and they make changes or they they save something a, a, a file locally on the desktop once the client reboots uh, that uh, those changes are flushed so they're essentially um, stored in a in an overlay which is typically uh, in in ram and again i'll cover that briefly in the demo and again the shell launcher which can be used in place to replace the regular Windows Explorer shell. And again, this provides kiosk access to the WVD client. Now for AV, uh, Windows Defender is integrated by default into Windows 10 IoT, and it can be tuned to work alongside the unified write filter, which, is, which we mentioned above. And again, I'll link to some recommendations on that if you are using Windows Defender. And alternatively, if you prefer any third-party AV application, uh, again, tune the UWF, uh, the right filter as you would. So, for example, you want to exclude uh, folders that contain things like the definition updates and any ex excluded areas that you would normally cover with the AV solution. And finally, Windows Update. So we find some customers, particularly if the endpoint falls outside of the scope of the company infrastructure, that leveraging things like UWF and the shell launcher can mitigate the need for the same Windows update frequency of regular PCs and laptops. However, because it's Windows 10 IoT, you know, it does fall into line for your common patching uh, Windows update tools um, such as WSUS and SCCM, et cetera. And again, the UWF filter can work with that accordingly so that it can be temporarily lifted whilst the endpoint is is updated 
So with that, that takes us to the demonstration. And uh, what I want to really cover is a, a demo firstly of the client uh, to cover some of the topics I've talked about as well as demonstrating the remote management. So first off, let's bring into view uh, a, a Tenzig Windows 10 IoT endpoint. This is our 6010Q model, which is an Intel based quad core uh, processor. And this is really how it looks out of box. So you're greeted with uh, a welcome. It does feature a wizard to get you started. And that includes the ability of creating uh, different shortcuts to different, different types of clients, as well as creating different user accounts and as well as any personal personalization features. Again, to save you from having to, to dig in inside the Windows OS, these are all the commonly configured attributes that we see. Now, uh, let me exit out of there. Now, the other thing that we, we feature, as mentioned, quite a few differences and, and variables in this uh, image uh, to assist with deployments. One of those things is the fact that by default, we feature two user accounts in the stock image. They are obviously the administrator account, which we're currently logged in as now, as well as a account called Thin Client User. And this by default is a restricted account, which has very limited uh, ability other than to open shortcuts and applications on, on the desktop. And you don't necessarily have to use this, but again, it's just there as a starting point, as a, as a base, if you like, to enable you to, um, to, get, to get up and running and get started. Now there is this uh, lock or unlock user utility where you can tweak this to allow user accounts uh, different access based on their rights. But by default, that thing client user account is again, very restricted. There is also the ability of quite simply enabling things like auto logon features. So as we saw when I connected to the endpoint, we automatically logged on as the admin. So auto login to either the administrator account or the thin client user account can be enabled here. And again, that's part of the automation that we talked about before, where you ultimately want to provide the endpoint to the user and give them the quickest and easiest route or route to connect to, uh, in, the, in this case, WVD. Uh, we also then have features like UWF, which I'll not go into just yet. We'll come back to that in a moment. The first thing I want to do is to sign out of here as the local admin and sign in as the thin client user. So the default password, which of course can be changed for administrator is admin or lowercase. And the default password for thin client user is the same. So it's thin client user with capital C capital T, sorry, capital C, capital U. So again, you'll notice a slight difference here. I'm right clicking on the desktop, on the on the taskbar. Uh, so it's, again, it's very limited in terms of what I can do as a user, as a, as a very basic starting point. So when I sign into here, you can see again, I've got access to the likes of a, of a PDF reader and Edge, and I've also got the remote desktop client. Now I have signed in here previously, and as you can see, I, I am subscribed as a, as a user and I can get access to, in this case, my uh, WVD desktop, which again, I'll, uh, I'll come back to later. So again, you would use that combination again in a mixed environment where the user wants to access perhaps uh, published apps through WVD with a combination of local apps, as well as again, if they want uh, features like Microsoft Edge locally. Let's again say that you've got another scenario whereby they want the, the kiosk based access. So all they ever want to do is to access their WVD resources, most specifically the WV desktop, what we can do is we can turn on uh, the shell launcher. So shell launcher again is a, it's a Windows 10 IoT feature. And essentially what we've done is we've, we've created some tools to allow you to do that through a, uh, a GUI, which otherwise you have to do through uh, PowerShell, for example, and uh, WMI commands. So 
uh, there's a there's a couple of steps to enable this. Uh, so when we go into the UWF wizard, it brings us into this first screen, the UWF status and, and shell launcher and keyboard filter service. So we can see in here that the shell launcher is currently enabled. So I did prep it before the demo. I'm a great believer in practicing demos before I before I go live and I have great, great uh, faith in the demo gods, but I think you have to prep whatever you can and I'll probably tempt fate here by something going wrong from this from this point forwards. But let's go. So the first step that you have to do is you have to create a default shell. Uh, so you would have to essentially create a default shell whereby it opens the regular uh, Explorer executable uh, and that's based on the administrator account as default and you enable the default shell at that point. So when I click OK at that point or click default shell, it would prompt me to reboot the unit. Again, that's already set, so I don't need to do that. But what I am going to demonstrate is a custom shell. So the purpose of the custom shell is to assign a different shell for, again, the Thin Client user account, where instead of when the Thin Client user account logs into uh, Windows 10 IoT, instead of it launching this traditional Explorer shell, it launches purely the uh, the remote desktop client or the WVD client. So it's program files, remote desktop, and it's MSRDCEW. Now, you wouldn't necessarily need to use it here, but there is a, a support for optional parameters, for example, whereby if the executable that you're launching supports um, uh, verbose parameters, you can put those in there. And also you have an unexpected close. So because the user only has access to, in this case, the MSRDCW executable, what actually happens if they close that application? Does it simply restart that shell? Does it reboot? Does it shut down? So most typically you leave it at, uh, at restart shell. Now, when I go ahead here, let's just double check I've got everything right. So it's thin client user, it's MSRDCW and it's restart shell. When I go ahead and click add shell there, I'm going to click yes, and it's going to warn me that, to, that I need to reboot. I'm going to click no at this point, and I'm going to exit out, and I'm going to enable the thing client user auto logon. So I'm just going to select yes to that prompt, and that's now going to reboot the endpoint, uh, fingers crossed. So it's going to reboot the endpoint, and as the endpoint's rebooted, it should hopefully, fingers crossed, reboot into the kiosk mode uh, with the, the WVD client. And let's just give it a moment. Whilst it's rebooting, let's just move quickly to the Tenzig manager. So we'll come back to this in a moment, but currently you can see we have, this is just a demo um, instance of Tenzing Manager Server. It's running in Azure and we use it entirely for this purpose where we've currently got 10 clients that have at any one time registered to it. So let's leave that for now and let's go ahead and reconnect. And as we can see on connection back to that user, you can see it's launched the, the WVD client or the remote desktop client. And again, I have the ability of really doing nothing here. So all I can do is use that to interface with my desktops and hopefully as it should prompt me for my password. And let's see if my English to US keyboard is working correctly. And as you can see, that gives me a, a really simple uh, non-intrusive layer to access the Windows Virtual Desktop. And as you can see, we've got um, just a basic um, demo desktop where we've got, again, uh, featured products like Microsoft Teams and Zoom VDI, where we have, uh, let's say, a webcam that's connected to the endpoint and a, a USB headset that are both encoded locally at the endpoint. So I'm going to quit out of that virtual desktop and what I'm going to do is just initiate control alt delete and I'm going to sign out of the thin client user and sign back in as admin so that we can just finish off by looking at the remote management. So 
again, let's bring that into view. We have we have the Tenzig Manager server here. Again, we see that we've got 10 clients uh, who, which have previously been registered. If we bring into view uh, the browser, so let me just authenticate back into here. And here's where the demo, <laughs> let's just, uh, my, either my sausage fingers or my memory is failing me, just one second. All right, that looks better. So again, we sign into that same uh, manager server, but this time through a web console. And any changes that are reflected in the the installable console that we saw before are reflected in here, and vice versa, as we'll see uh, in the demo. So. Uh, the cloud management feature is mentioned. We probably added that around five years ago for Linux based clients and then quickly accelerated that for Windows based clients last year. Uh, so from Windows clients, if we go into the cloud agent settings here. So again, the pre baked image or the stock image of the Windows 10 IoT Tenzig clients feature this particular agent. So we can enable the cloud management agent from this area. Uh, we can either query the management server or the cloud connector address by pre-configuring a DNS SRV record, or like in this case, we can punch in the IP address or the FQDN, um, and the port is 443 by default. And then with that, we can first of all test the connection, which as we can see is successfully connected. Um, and as well as deploy service certificates. So the cloud connector just does leverage a self-signed certificate by default, but we do support, as I mentioned before, both commercial certificates and AD generated certificates that you can drop in to both the endpoint and the, uh, the, the, the VM running the cloud connector. So for now, I'm just gonna leave that as accept. Now, before I go ahead and click apply, it's also just worth showing you security settings so registration code is the ability of filtering our remote worker clients into different management groups with the Tenzig manager server. So, for example, if I create one here of NerdyOcon, make sure I've got that right. Probably just the VNC session to be fair. So if we put that registration code in, and we also have a, another recent feature called an authorization code. Now, what that does is where the registration code is simply a filter that filters into a configuration group, Auth authorization is as it states, it's authorization. So if we turn on authorization in the Tenzig Manager server, it will only permit authorized clients that have a matching code and you can revoke those in the Tenzig manager server. But the purpose of the demo for today is really just to demonstrate the checking in and the filtering down. So again, before I click on apply and OK, let's bring the Tenzig manager back into view. And if I go ahead and create a new group here, I'm going to give the group a name and you see we have a number of different filters so again these are these are built historically i guess for more common scenarios or previously common scenarios such as again office based setups where you might have different locations based on ip range or mac address or or different platforms so what we want to do here is filter by again cloud agent registration code and then add in at least one filter there which is again nerdy ocon 
So if I click on OK there and OK the group, we can see that has created the group. It's currently zero clients connected in there. But if we click OK here and then just apply that change, that should go ahead and enable the cloud management agent under the hood. Um, and again, that's, as I said before, that's baked into the, the service. So uh, it's something that you essentially configure once and then it applies to other clients containing that image. So as we can see, that's now showing connected here. And if we switch towards the web console, you can see we've discovered another client. So again, this is the client that we were attaching to is physically in my office. I'm sat here at home and then this is uh, this is a, a VM running in Azure. So we can see uh, the client is registered into the main client view. We can see that its status or status is online and we can also see that it has filtered down into that group based on the registration code. So again, that allows you to filter your users perhaps based on remote workers solely. You might want to do it by uh, worker or, or employee job role, job type, as well as perhaps by, by physical location. So it gives you a, a good few options to to do that um, and then from there we can for example we can shadow that user both through the web console and through the regular console that uh, that we were connected to beforehand and again that's all tunneled through the the cloud connector as we can see so we're interacting with the with the endpoint as we were uh, when we were shadowing it uh, directly through the VNC connection, but now it's again all tunneled through uh, securely through port 443. Uh, other features to mention, so we can do things like reboots. Uh, we can also, I touched on this before, this can own, this particular feature I'm about to show can only be done through the regular console and not through the web console, but let's say that you want to periodically update the remote desktop client as it's released by Microsoft you can use the package manager uh, and you can do this as, a, as I'm doing here to one client at a time, but you can do it as a scheduled task and you can do it to multiple clients on demand. But you can essentially use the package manager here to uh, check in later versions of the desktop client. So this process process is basically taking the MSI in effect, the one that's available on the Microsoft site, the latest MSI, and then checking it into the management tool with uh, with a bunch of criteria to allow that executable to go towards the Windows 10 IoT client and again keep the client in check as far as the latest and greatest uh, WVD client. So they're the sorts of you know features that you can do uh, with remotely connected clients. So that really um, ends the uh, the demo and uh, and the session. I hope everybody's enjoyed it. I haven't really had a chance to look through the Q and A throughout. I can. Talk yeah, oh, I can. I can help you with it, Kevin. I got a couple of questions. I can lob your way. Okay. Um, so one of the first questions we had is, how do we become a Tenzig partner? So, and and maybe even talk about you know ways to consume uh, Tenzig products. Yeah. So that's that's a really uh, easy onboarding. Um, question. I think the, f the first thing that we probably need to do is to determine uh, the company and location then and then and pro probably some contact details, either a number or email address. And then I can get one of my co-workers in uh, in the US office to to reach out and, and progress that. But yeah, it's a very, very simple approach uh, to that. Awesome. And then we have one more question here. Um, and then I have one myself. So uh, second question is going to be: Can we see multiple customers in the man in the customer manager, uh, or is it one customer per manager? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So you can see multiple customers in the manager, but as it stands today, uh, you can't essentially create a multi-tenant type setup. So whilst let's say that if you wanted to manage all of your customers under the one manager instance, that is possible. But if you then wanted to delegate uh, admin rights to each of your customers, let's say that these groups 
we see here are our, our customers and you essentially want to delegate access to that ju to just those groups that is currently a feature that is in our uh, in our roadmap and and, and wish list but again it's a it, you know it's a free tool there's nothing to stop you from spinning up multiple versions of them and again if the question was can you use it to manage your your multiple customers the answer to that uh, that question is is yes you can that's great. And so, um, and thank you, Raymond, for those questions. Those are good questions. And then just, you know, in parting it, you know, Kevin, I, uh, we've talked a little bit and just, you know, just the recognition of, of the pressures and, and things that the uh, pandemic has, has put on a lot of business and companies out there, you know, when it comes to success stories or just a good story you have in your mind, uh, as you either talk to partners or have just seen things like what's one thing that you could leave us with today. That's just a really good story as to how Tenzig's been able to uh, kind of satisfy some of the things and considerations going on. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a great question, and I think it's it's one of a two, one of a few points that um, again the collaboration piece has been a has been a, a huge thing for for Tenzig. That if we turn if we turn back to this time last year, there was um, there was no support in a in a VDI space. Uh, for, for products like Teams, like Zoom, uh, like Cisco WebEx, all of these things that um, were not necessarily recognized in a VDI space. And Tenzig were able to, um, you know, get those to market very, very quickly. And, you know, we helped, you know, importantly, existing customers to be able to leverage those sorts of tools to enable their workforce to, again, go home and continue to, to collaborate with those sort of tools that uh, previously they, they weren't necessarily required to do in anywhere near the capacity. And again, the, the remote management is another big thing. We were very, very busy uh, last year with, uh, with again, assisting, you know, customers pretty much overnight with having to move, move endpoints away and, and to be able to manage them remotely as opposed to, uh, as to in office. And, and I think, the resonating feature that all of our customers speak of and again you see those either in the testimonies that are referred to as well as we did some video case studies um, on the Tenzig channel on YouTube and it's really about Tenzig Tenzig as a business that we offer great customer service you know we're we're not necessarily uh, a company brand as such it's the people within and they're the I guess they're the success stories that really help our partners and end users you know, make that like I touched on at the start of the presentation. It's about making the endpoint fit your environment and not the other way around. And that's that's really what keeps, you know, leaves a good taste in uh, in uh, Tenzig customers' mouths and minds. But in, you know, enables them to come back again and again. So no, uh, that's good, and that you know, it speaks to a lot to culture and and um, you know, interest in other success. And so that's a that's a great response to that question. Um, one, one last one, you know, just, can you give us a generalized price range of, of the different hardware offerings? You yeah, have? sure. The, the, the kind of typical average price for a windows based client is, is around the $600 mark. That's list. Uh, they do, they do vary. And that's, that's again, specifically a mid range, you know, something in our mid to high end range that again can support, you know, everything under the sun as mentioned. So they do range dependent on whether they feature Windows 10 IoT as well as Linux um, as as well as, uh, you know, some some lower powered clients as well. But again, I think it's best to let the sales guys at Tenzig walk through the entire the entire portfolio and they can uh, comment on that more specifically. That sounds great. Okay. Well, I think we're, I think we're at time guys. And so we do appreciate everybody attending today. Any 